Today we find ourselves in the centre of Southend. It's a town centre site we find ourselves outside of the 8 screen multiplex the Ogin Cinema. Now, it's a beautiful young cinema this projection wise and I'm only talking about projection. Uh, we've got Michael the chief technician here and the cinema projection rooms are really really nice. It's a nice 8 screen cinema. Next to the plaza and by the amp rack, what I would probably think uh, an old lens box. Is that right? That's right, Frank, yes. Where did it come from, Michael? It came from the old Odeon, Frank. Oh, fantastic! So that's where we keep our, our lens for 166. Ah! Which, uh, and that just shows special again. The ring, yeah. Yeah. The, the lens is and they're really good. Now, is that an old lens from the old cinema? Yeah, that's the old, it's one of the old Todeo lenses. Oh, let me see. Okay. Hundred and thirty-five mil, it's unheard of now, isn't it? Oh it is, isn't it? Yeah. That's brilliant. CP five hundred. Now Michael, you've got a small patch bay. Now what's the story behind this? Well we thought we might be doing some theatre lets and somebody might want to bring in a small DLP projector for mm -hmm. for like conferencing work. But yeah, it, it hasn't happened anyway, but we put this patch bay in so that we can access all the channels on the five hundred. So you can either have an external source, which is all available on these quarter inch jacks, or you can have, they can put a, mat uh, a matrix two channel input in ProLogic, just to make it a bit more versatile. And did you wire this all in yourself? Well, yeah, we, we actually bought the patch bay from Matlin. <laughs> and um, we, our sound engineer gave us the, the drawing for the connector on the back, and we sold it all together. And, and you've done a test and it all works? goes into the external It's our auto fader for the non sync as well. Okay, so we got down the stairs. Before we go. The hard drive for foyer music. So this is the hard drive? Yes. And all the foyer music is driven off this. How does it get to you? Does it come on a CD-ROM or do you get it down by the phone? No, CD-ROM. CD-ROM. You, so you put a CD-ROM in and it takes about 10 minutes to download, then it ejects itself, then it's on the hard drive. Oh, and how often do you change the disc? They send them out about every four to six weeks. And a CD cleaner. Now I've just spotted another nitro shore roller. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. Mm. Now, why have you put one on your bench? Well, when I was talking to Nigel, when we, you know, we use so many plastic spools now, that when we make the film up, you're making it up into a plastic spool. So, in fact, you could actually be charging the film up when you're making it up. So, Nigel thought if you had a metal roller on there, that it would discharge before actually running onto the plate. And it does actually work. It works very well. That's fantastic. Is that the top box? It is great. So when you're on single manning, you can see, at least, you know, you, you can look at that and think, no, that everything seems to be running fine. Right. And there you've got a monitor of the foyer. That's right. You have a stack of CDs. Start the loop. So what screens are these? One and two. Well that one up there is not got such a bad, it's got a rake on it. But when you look at here, it's this this these are raked more. 
Well, these two, uh, one and two are actually on the ground floor, Fred. Three oh. and four are on first floor. That's the answer. That's, that's the answer. This little box of tricks here, what's going on? Well, it's, it's just a remote for Odeon 2 Cinemation, Fred, because when, when I put the Cinemation in here, we had the amplifier actually used to be on the wall, so the only place to put the Cinemation was over the other side of these platter. Oh, yes. Because when, they, when we went to digital, they took the amp rack away. There were two options, either move the Cinemation here or Which move the remote. Which would be a terrible job to move it. Yeah, so... So it, your probably remote controls are this, you pulse the Cinemation from here. Well, you pulse it from there, but you, you can, you know, you can start the CD player from here, you can put the alarm on and off from here, and then you've got the warning buzzer for the projector start. If you isolate the cinemation, you get the indicator light, and you've got the projector start, the projector run. So these lights do tell you what's happening. That's yeah. fabulous, and you got a thermometer? No, that's the clock for timing the adverse trailers. All right. Ah, oh, brilliant, Michael. Oh, I know, you've got... A different type of cleaner here. Yeah, we've got electric, uh, electrostatic cleaners, Fred. Do they work? Yeah, very well. So, I mean, all the different various types you've got, which is the best? Because one and two, uh, the, the air vent for this box is actually over the service yard, so in my theory, most of the dust in South End gets drawn in those vents. So, these are, are a very expensive way of cleaning the film, but they do clean it very well. Right. It's the PTR rollers. We use those in conjunction with these. Oh yeah. Get the large bits off, but these are a very good way of cleaning. But the old Kelmer system is, is very good for when you've got an old print for projections. Yeah, but once you've used the media, it's just... It's, yeah. So, I mean, there's been a lot of uh, conversation and discussion about static on films. Now, that's interesting. You never have a problem with static here. Well, nothing, no, nothing to speak of. I mean, Not I, even with the Harry Potter's, the Schindler's List of this world? No, Harry Potter was no problem. And yet the rest of the country had a lot of problem. Obviously, it's something to do with the installation here. Uh, do you have any theories? I don't know. This thing is a combination of everything fits together quite well, so maybe we're just lucky. But, you know, we, we've got the brushes on the three large auditoriums. We've got metal rollers to earth the film. So... Maybe we're just lucky, I guess. Oh, right, so you put those spaces on because this can be used for 70 mil. I see. When, what you do is when you go to 70 mil, you, you take that off. And that, that goes, goes in the middle. middle. And that spaces it away. Oh, uh, wow. Well, oh. Electrostatic cleaner. That can be used on 70 millimeter. Wow, that's brilliant. Did this come from the old Odeon? No, no, we bought that. All oh, right. Bracket? Uh, that was. Ah, that. uh, that's that's a that's a mapping bracket. Yeah. Oh, I see. I thought you were telling me these are mapping, isn't it? Yeah. So it's the same colour. It is, yeah. So is it just a small mapping box? It is, yeah. That's fabulous. So here's the cinemation, so you can see how far the cinemation is away from the projector. Is that for when it all gets too much, you just go and sit on the roof? No, for it, we had a health and safety inspection and they said the access to the, the air handling unit for the projection room wasn't adequate, so we had to have that put in. So how did you used to get to the air handling unit? They had to put a ladder up outside, so in the, where we get the film cans. Oh yeah. But this is a proper fixed ladder with a platform up there and... Uh, so now you just bump into it as you walk past? 
I've done it a couple of times. I've been yeah. using the rewind and it's gone, gone to go to the on one and it's been in the way. And so. <laughs> the new Kelmar rewinder? Uh, yes, for only about three years, but yeah. I won't pass any comments. <laughs> nice one, Michael. It's a beautiful rewinder, isn't it? Yes, it's very good, yeah. It's nice. Ah, now, Michael. Now, isn't this a splicing tape where, if you splice it correctly, you can see the identification where the join is That's right. for placing off? And does it actually work? We started using it at the old Odeon, so we've been using it for about eight years. And it actually works. Yeah, it's, it wouldn't be about it. Splice mark, it's very good. Uh, I just noticed some other splicing tape. Just, uh... Oh, Michael! That's a Zenon lamp holder. Yes, Fred. Oh, Michael, I'm going to make one and work. That is brilliant! Did you cut the end out? Yeah, I'm just uh, you know, standing on Well, craft knife, because I'm not allowed to use standing knives now. So. Oh, right. Very ingenious you are. Very. It's too much time on my hands for it. No, you haven't. Everything is just spot on here. Look at this. Beautiful. Clean, and it's not because it's not used, because it is. But everything is kept immaculate. A little baby one for his bobbins. Oh, look at this, Michael. Swear cinemation. Oh, uh, it's just an empty box, though. This is one from Barnet. It is, yeah. Oh, look at this. The thing is, it can be rebuilt. You've got the main parts here, which is the, the actual unit and the matrix board. Ah, oh, yes. Now, this animation, correct me if I'm wrong, this was actually installed here by your good self. And when you got another animation with the uh, double matrix board, you installed it and put the new one in, is this correct? That's right, yeah. And some switch gear for the cinemation. Yeah, this was the power supply from uh, Barnett's. The size of it. It's huge. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. The power supply from Nottingham. Oh, really? Yeah. So the difference in size. This is the old Nossi unit from the old Odeon. Ah, yes. It must have been ages to carry all the old stuff over here. Well, when we knew it was going to close, we started to take what we could before. But then the day after it closed, we had a van turn up and we just tried to get as much out as possible. Oh, right. That is screen one, isn't it, Michael? Yes, bro. What's that Lola for there, Michael? Well, uh, that is the one that they use, uh, the Nigel Shaw makes for, you know they have to bring the house lights up now at the end of the Oh yes. Well, a lot, the engineers were given a load of those brackets to put on projectors, which don't have automation. And my engineer, Peter Grimes, said, did I want a bracket? And I thought, well, it wasn't, he did, you know, he was offering, so I put it on. Oh, good. So, Just coming to passageway or a stairway, just from the rear of screen four and screen eight actually comes out on this exit, and we're going downstairs, Michael. Are we? Yes, right. And what have we got in here? This is the lift mounts for in the Alright, so what have we got here then? Well that's the reservoir with the, with the hydraulic fluid in it. Yes. That's the pump. And that's the microprocessor for the control of it. Alright. 
to, if the, if the lift does get stuck, what do you actually do? You have to turn the power off. Yes. And then you release the pressure, which lower, lets the ram come down and lowers the lift. And it does lower, not in a big thud, it just comes down gentle. Just gentle, yeah. Well, Michael, we're back where we started in your very pleasant surroundings, your restroom, for showing me around and letting us film here. And uh, well, we'll talk tomorrow, I'm sure. Okay. So, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for coming down.